Let's watch a preview from part one of the ABC After School special, Cyrano. Whom should I love? I, whom the ugliest woman would ignore. I, with a nose which arrives a minute and a half before me. Whom should I love? Why, to make the comedy perfect, of course, it must be the woman with twice the beauty of Venus herself. So appealing. He is new. He joined the Gascons just today. Christian, his name is, I think. And he leads our guards? No, milady. That honor goes to Cyrano de Bergerac. He joins us here at the inn. Oh, dear Cyrano. Of whom it is said, each man has a nose, but his is the only nose that has a man. His name is Christian, you say? This Cyrano for whom we wait, what manner of man is he? The bravest soul alive. The best swordsman in France. Also poet, philosopher, musician, even an actor. The perfect man... Such a man must indeed win ladies by the score. Except for a monstrous trick of fate. You see, he has this most extraordinary... Nose? Say that word now, but never again. On that he is most sensitive. You would die before your time. Surely a nose can't be all that conspicuous. Sh judge for yourself. He comes. Innkeeper, quickly now. Wine for my lady. Where is your hospitality? Ah, gentlemen. Monsieur de Bergerac. Monsieur. Your trip has been uneventful. Good. You may proceed. I will attend my lady in her carriage. Incredible. Cyrano, how nice to see you. The pleasure in total, I claim. <laughs> the cadets have left. Cyrano remains alone. Excellent. His life is now measured in seconds. Give the signal. Would you care to sample the local wine? It would seem we will have recreation before refreshment. Your pardon while I attend to this rude interruption. This cork has proved resistant. Ah, a thousand thanks. Coachman, on to the Royal Hall. This steel and you will meet again, de Bergerac. with you, Christian. She is beautiful. Uh, so you've mentioned. Come, the wine! 
Your throat must be dry from our dusty pilgrimage. Indeed, sir, my throat is dry, but from love. Yes, I know, it's sweet torture. Love makes one hungry and thirsty, and at the same time makes one unable to eat or drink. I wish I could say things like that. I'm told the Lady Roxanne cherishes wit. <laughs> it is a simple matter. Just listen to Cyrano and learn the play of words. For what I just said, he said. I am incapable. Her way of speaking, Cyrano's way of speaking, they elude me. I am but a common soldier with a full heart but a simple tongue. Learn from Cyrano and right here. He performs on stage tonight. He plays the clown who speaks of love. No, he doesn't. Cyrano is not allowed within the hall tonight because of the presence of the cardinal who detests him with an unchurchlike hatred. A pity. Monsieur Linier will act out the role instead. I take these refreshments now to the players. Cyrano's independence has made him enemies in high places. Isn't she? I know. Beautiful. Some pastry, Monsieur Linier. Uh, not at the moment. Cyrano, it's you. How perceptive. But you cannot appear on stage. The Cardinal has forbidden. His eminence has also forbidden sin, but it flourishes. But if you break the law... The Cardinal's petty outbursts are not the law of the land. I fear a plot against the King. I must be near to protect him. You'll be seized immediately. Perhaps not. This mask will disguise my delicate features. Why is it I think the king is not the true reason you appear? Because your mind is more filled with creamy fluff than even your macaroons. <coughs> Dear Baker, you are right. My true reason sits beside the Comte de Guiche. The frail hope of this poor harlequin being that by addressing my words of love to her from behind this screen, perhaps now at last, Roxanne will attend my heartbeat if for once her eyes are not diverted by the jest of this ungainly protuberance. She will respond. She must. Dear patrons, to our play we now beg your kind attention. That voice, that bearing, could it be Serrano? Impossible. I have forbidden his appearance. We tell this eve of love's intrigues using what poor invention the muse permits to put in words that tender wondrous pleasure which sways both lord and lowly serf in equal mystic measure. It is he. Shout that they remove his mask. His mask. Remove his mask. My lord, it marks a man of Christian breeding to thus disrupt an art's proceeding. Off with his mask. <laughs> Would we learn of love from him who knows it not? Not even a scullery wench would cherish a man with a beak like that. <laughs> oh, my apologies if this profile offends your eyes. One answer. Come forward and perhaps reduce its size. I shall be pleased to oblige. In truth, your nose is much too large. Hold a moment, dear Count. You can do better than that. Surely you can ridicule my nose with a much more inspired picture. Let me see. How about carrying that hose, you should be painted red like a fire wagon? Or perhaps, tell me, when it drips, do you use a bed sheet for a handkerchief? Come, have it. A, a, a possibility. You must be a lover of music to carry about perpetually your own tuba. You procrastinator. You could have mentioned another benefit. With just one sniff, you can smell an entire garden. Or you might have said, with such a paddle, just by turning your head, you could play at tennis. I weary of your self-laments. Laments, you tadpole. Know that I take full pride in this distinguishment of mine. For a large nose is possessed only by a large man. Large in amiability and aspiration. Qualities such as you, Monsieur Runty Nose, will never possess. But perhaps I can assist you and enlarge your nose with a lump. <laughs> guards, guards, seize him. Christian, be careful. Ruined. All ruined. Ruined indeed. 
I must thank the cadets for coming to my aid. They've gone to the tavern to toast your victory. In which victory I lost her. So it was not for the king. A woman? Inexact. A goddess. You find it impossible that I would love. Unthinkable the elephant would have a heart. But you've never said. Is it possible for me to know whom? Think now. Whom should I love? I, whom the ugliest woman would ignore. I, with a nose which arrives a minute and a half before me. Whom should I love? Why, to make the comedy perfect, of course, it must be the woman with twice the beauty of Venus herself. That tells me nothing. And I tell her nothing. What nonsense. If you love her, tell her so. I am too grotesque. Though I worship Cleopatra, do I look like Caesar? And though my heart yearns for Roxanne, have I not the look of Cyrano? Roxanne? Yes, Roxanne. Hopeless. Perhaps not. I recall when you fought on stage, I saw her watching, her eyes brimming with tender concern. With concern toward me? No, no, you misread. Is it possible? Go, speak to Cyrano, ask for him to meet me, at which time I will enlist his aid to make shy Christian my suitor. Well, I, I, well, all, all right, if you want me to. The truth. You fought. I saw her clutch the rail. She swayed, her eyes closed in beseeching prayer for your safety. You must speak to her. She cares. You, you might be wrong. She would laugh at me. That is one thing I could not endure. A word with you, monsieur? No. Milady sends me to inquire. Uh, is there a place tomorrow where we may meet? Milady Roxanne? She seeks to speak with you uh, in privacy. In privacy? Name the place quickly, I beg you. With me in privacy? Monsieur, please. My place, the pastry shop. The morning at 10 precisely. Well, dear elephant, now are you convinced? She cares indeed for Cyrano. You hear? In the morning at 10, she speaks with me, and with her words, my life begins. What time is it? Five minutes more. What is that? A letter to Roxanne. One that up to now I have only written in my heart and torn up so many times. Ah, she will not come. She will. These cream rolls I made especially for her, each wrapped in one of your poems. An effort wasted as my own. She will not come. It was a joke. It's a joke. Then her carriage outside must be an hallucination. Welcome, dear ladies. But if you will forgive me my kitchen commands, I'm sure something must be overheating. Do you like cream rolls, madame? Only with vanilla custard. Then take these. Thank you. And eat them on the street. May I congratulate you upon your exploits last night? Do you know that the Count is being talked about as my future husband? An ugliness at all costs to be avoided. Agreed. And in truth, I have in mind another. Oh? Uh, but before I tell you, do you recall how we as children used to play by the pond outside the chateau? An indelible memory. Was I pretty? Mm, average. But you had a pleasant manner. I could always talk to you then. Dare I still? I dare. Listen, then. I love. Ah. But he does not know. At least not yet. Ah. He seems to fear me. He keeps his distance and never says one word. Ah. He is a soldier. Ah. In your own regiment. Ah. And last night when I saw him, so fearless, ah. so aristocratic, ah. so, so young and handsome handsome i knew my heart was his cyrano is anything wrong no no nothing 
too much of Ragano's confections. Ah, oh, his name is Christian de Nivellet, one of the new cadets. We have never spoken. It has been so sudden, and he's so shy. Well, you see, he is encouraged to court me, to write to me. Will you? I have finished the cream rolls. Then go out and read the poetry. We both must go. You will be his friend. I will be his friend. Without him, I shall die. Then it is necessary you be with him, not without him. Oh, words can never thank you. Oh, Cyrano, I love you as I love my father, or my uncle, or my king. Ragano, you summoned me? I suppose you were too busy to overhear. A few words did leak through the door. Then you know the lady loves me as she loves her father, or her uncle, or the king, or perhaps indeed her poodle. There are solutions. A duel, perhaps. Or this Christian could be assigned a distant garrison. Dear Baker, if one loves, it is the object of that love which is paramount. To love is to make the beloved happy. And that I shall try to do. You would endeavor to win for another the favors of your lady? Isn't that too much a burden for one heart, Cyrano? Not to do it would be a burden even heavier. <laughs> there he is, our hero! I have decided. I will resign from the cadets and return to my province. Reconsider, Christian. Stay. No. Here I would only be tortured by her being so near yet intended for the Count. Gentlemen, I give you the Gascon cadets. Henceforth, my only life, and for any man, the only life. Hey! Monsieur de Bergerac, a word with you, if you please. Ah, one of our new cadets. I know you, young bloods. You wish to apply for a post of danger to win you honor and acclaim. Sir, I wish to resign. Resign? Resign from the cadets? Why? It is personal. Ah. The dangers of the past evening were not to your liking. The prospects of more, not to your spleen. It is not that. All right, be gone. We require spines within our tunics. Our plume is white, not yellow. I am not a coward. I demand satisfaction. I do not cross steel with boys. Would it make a difference, monsieur, if I promise not to nick your nose? Ah, all the rest of you out! Leave me with this popinjay. He will be served singular and alone. You picked the wrong morning to vex him further. This will require but a little moment. Afterward, bring me the new cadet, Christian de Navillette. Uh, Cyrano, that is Christian. <laughs> I, uh, I am pleased with you. I do not understand. You have courage. I am de Nouvellet. Your wish to leave this personal matter, it concerns a lady. Unobtainable, hence a torment. A further conjecture. Could she be the Lady Roxanne? You know of this? And more. I also know she loves you. I have little humor, sir. It is not a joke. She spoke of you only this morning in this very room. I can't believe. Roxanne. And she came to you? You must understand, I am her father, her uncle, her poodle. Poodle? An expression, her friend. The sum is she loves you. Do you love her? On my honor, I have loved no one as much. Then you must tell her so. But how? Words for me are not easy. Then write her a letter. I write as ineffectively as I talk. If only I were as clever as you are with words. If only I were as handsome as you, so I could make some use of them. I wish I had your wit. Then I will lend it. I dabble at poetry. By chance I have a letter here I wrote as an exercise. Send this to her. But words by another? What matters if it is your thoughts they reflect? 
But this exercise, will it fit Roxanne? Mm, close enough. It will suffice, and I shall write others. Why do you do this for me? A comedy, a diversion, a practice. And the letters will in truth be yours, because to me they will be so... meaningless. Cyrano, my behavior, I apologize. Understood and forgotten. You will also repeat to her phrases I shall give you daily. The two of us make one Romeo. We shall win her both together. Poor Christian. By now, he will be mincemeat. I am afraid to look. Gentlemen, my young friend, de Neuvillette, will remain, and in all our good graces. Bring a pen. Roxanne's fair eyes will at last read my words of love. She will never believe it comes from him. She will believe whatever I choose to have her believe. I shall intermix the romantics of the Greek poets, the Latin poets, perhaps even the Byzantines. I shall woo and win her heart with such love letters as have never been written before. No long face, dear friend. I will find a pleasure in this. After all, it is better to be half a Romeo than never to be one at all. Thank you.